Hey guys, just want to come live and give you a little tutorial video on how to manage and set up Zoom meetings now that we're in this virtual learning environment. So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to go to my Zoom, uh, just go to Zoom, click on my Zoom web conferencing software here, and I've obviously already signed in and things like that, so I'm going to go to my account. Now what's going to happen is it's going to take me to my account here and it's going to give me some information, uh, a lot of different like links and things like that, and then there's my you know, basic user type and all that stuff. So um, what we're going to try to do is there's a, there's a couple ways to approach this. What I'm kind of planning on right now doing for the moment is just to schedule meetings with and for my classes. And I'm going to show you some of the settings that you can set up in those meetings to kind of make facilitation of, of your classes a little bit easier. If I tap on schedule meeting here at the top, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call it, uh, I'll just call it my meeting for now. And you can kind of see that there's, you know, you can describe it, so you can call it whatever your class name is. You can say when you want it to start. And I believe uh, one of the things that's happened is uh, they've waived some of the meeting length requirements because of being an educational account, but I think it's gonna let you set whatever kind of time limit you want on there. Um, I'm not really sure about that whole thing quite yet, how that's gonna manifest itself, but it does let you set the duration. And so since our class is only gonna be 40 minutes, you know, that hour default is gonna be fine. Then, uh, would encourage you to make sure you check on that central time, make sure you're in the correct time zone. I think it's going to default to whatever your computer is, but just make sure you check that because otherwise your meeting's not going to open in time. And then this little setting right here, a recurring meeting. With our schedule the way that it is right now, obviously, you know, we've got navy and white days, and so you can schedule it as, you know, every Tuesday there's this meeting from, and however long you want to make it, right? So you want to make it the length of your class period, you can do that, and you can set it up as recurring. That way you don't have to do a meeting every single day and schedule those if you want. Automatically generate the meeting ID is fine. You can require a password on your meeting here, um, whatever, you know, whatever you want it to be. Then what we're going to look at now is what's going to happen when someone joins or when you kind of hop onto that meeting. And so with your with your video, uh, I'm going to encourage you, you know, for me, I'm, I'm going to have my video on, you know, I want them to see my face and the participant, you know, you can turn that on as well. For their audio, you don't know if they're going to be calling in on their phone or their computer, so leaving it on both is, is good. And one of the things that I'm going to do for my meetings is I am going to uh, mute my participants on entry and that's going to make sure that if somebody comes in late they don't have you know audio on right away and they can just kind of join uh, I also am going to enable what's called the waiting room now the waiting room is is just what it kind of sounds like it's a waiting room and so let's say our meeting's supposed to start at nine o'clock and a you know I, I set my meeting to open at nine o'clock and I'm, I'm two minutes late for whatever reason I'm, I'm wrapping up my previous meeting or whatever um, you know that's going to allow the participants to be in this holding area until you join. And that way you kind of all join at one time. And I'm going to enable that for mine uh, just because I, I like the idea of us all kind of starting at once. And then this record meeting automatically on the local computer. I know that's a setting because I'm on my laptop. I'm planning on doing that because I'll be uploading mine to uh, YouTube through my computer. I know the Swivel app has a really slick way to do that when you're using your iOS device, you know, your iPad or your phone uh, or, or your you know Android device. And so, uh, you don't necessarily need to use that unless you're using a computer. So I'm going to save those settings. That's kind of my basic settings right there for a given for a given meeting. Now, when I was looking through all this, and granted, I'm, I'm new at this, so I'm just kind of pointing out some things. My wife uses this all the time for her business, and so she's kind of giving me some tips and some tricks. One of the things that's really important that we do as we're getting ready to go and, and getting students all using this at the same time is they don't know about this technology. And so what their experience with this with something like this would be like a FaceTime call. And so they're FaceTiming their friends, right? They're in their bedroom. They're, you know, walking around the house and those kinds of things. And so there's a certain lack of etiquette potentially for them because this is a class, you know, and so you're going to be on with lots of classmates and they don't necessarily each want to have a view into the life of all their classmates. And so whether they use video or not, uh, we want to make sure that we're addressing individual concerns. Like if someone is, you know, in their bedroom, that might be a case where we mute their video and we talk to them later and say, hey, you know, could you find a desk to work at or some other background? You know, if they've got um, audio going on in the background that, you know, they don't know that their audio is on or they've got other things going on in the background, you know, that would be something to address with them. Just that meeting etiquette to let them know that this is a class. Anyway, so there are other 
settings in here that we can work with uh, that are going to allow us to do this. I'm going to just type in a little password here. It's not going to let me save it without it. So that's that's the first piece. The other thing is this. So I'm going to go down to uh, settings here. And this is going to be settings for, for general meetings when they're set up. Now you can see schedule meeting, in meeting basic, in meeting advanced. There's a couple things. So right here, the default settings are obviously already loaded. And so you can choose to start your meeting with your host video on, which means as soon as you join, you're going to be on camera. You can also do that for your participants. You can set it so that they're automatically on camera when they join. That's up to you. Would encourage you to keep telephone and computer audio because we don't know if students are going to be using their phones or their computer. And then again, this is the thing here. So join before host. A lot of these settings are kind of redundant um, just in the general meeting settings. So I'm going to leave mine off because I don't want them to join before. Um, requiring a password. Yes, we're requiring a password here. Uh, there's a couple of interesting ones I want to I want to uh, go here. So mute participants on entry. I'm going to say yes, I do want to mute them on entry. And then that will allow them to they can unmute them. And one of the things I do want to stress with you is because you are hosting this meeting, you can mute them their video, you can mute their audio. So you can turn off their audio or their video if at any point you feel like you know, they're um, disrupted or distracted or you know maybe something just happens in the background and they you know they have to step away or whatever um, you know you can give them the courtesy or you can give your the rest of your participants the courtesy of muting them a um, couple of other things just kind of walking through these things here so allow meeting participants to send a message visible to all participants so that's kind of that chat feature what it's called is the back channel so I actually really enjoyed having this today in our zoom meeting as those of us that were on were chatting together and you can kind of you know monitor that as the person who's running the meeting and it can actually be a really really good way for students to participate in the chat you know so sometimes you know you may not have that an opportunity to raise your hand or, or participate in the actual video that's going on but they can ask a question off to the side and other students can answer one of the cool things about the chat feature also is I can send a message as a participant to any of the individual participants privately or to a group of participants or to the whole group and so um, just kind of consider that, you know, as you're working through is your participation points that you give for a given discussion might not necessarily be them verbally commenting. So you kind of have to just think about that ahead of time is a typed comment in the group chat. Is that acceptable to you? And keep in mind that our students really do have uh, a very, they have a very texting mindset, right? They like to text things. They like to be in group chats and they kind of, you know, see that as, um, valid participation in their own social lives. And so I would encourage you to think about that when you're dealing with your students and, and potentially assigning credit for discussions or things like that. Okay, uh, so, and if um, you know you wanna turn off the private chat one-to-one, -one, you can do that, uh, that's up to you. I'm, I'm gonna choose to leave mine on, um, but if you you know you have concerns, you can turn off that that one-to-one -one peer chatting and they can only chat with the group. Play silent participants join or leave. Remember, you know, they may be joining late. So if you want that disruption uh, to know if they leave, uh, you can do that. Uh, another thought behind that might be, you know, if somebody jumps off and you've got a class of 25, it can let you know that they're leaving and you can check in on that. I'm going to choose to leave mine off for now. They can transfer files. What are the other things here? So um, I'm going to turn this on. This is allowed uh, to put an attendee on hold. Don't anticipate that I'm going to use it, but you know, if I've got somebody who just needs to be put on hold temporarily, I'm going to allow myself to have that ability to put them on hold and not. So the difference between that and turning off their audio is if I turn off their audio, they could turn it back on with, with a hold. They can't turn off the hold. I have to turn off the hold. So I'm going to choose to put that in as one of my settings. Then I am going to also say that all participants can share their screen so they can they can share what's on their screen. And if you want to use that for a feedback mechanism, right? So if they're doing, you know, if they're on their iPad and they're doing a math problem or they're doing some sort of, um, you know, whiteboarding activity, they could use Notability and you could have them write on Notability and they could share their screen and you could see everyone's answers to that potentially. So only the host can share while someone else is sharing, meaning, you know, they're, going to have to unshare to be able to jump in. You can also put all participants, which would mean that anybody can swap. So if I'm sharing my screen, they can just jump in and bump me off and another participant can jump in and bump them off. So that's kind of a management issue. Uh, if you want to, if you want to go down that road, I'm going to choose to say all participants can share because I'm going to be dealing primarily with uh, seniors and, and, and in AP stats and things like that. So I, I might choose to exercise that. Okay. Annotation, they can annotate and add information. Yes, they can use whiteboard, remote control. During screen sharing, the person can allow others to control the shared content. So if I've got my screen up, 
someone else can come on and they can start clicking on my screen. Um, I might turn, I'm going to, I think I'm going to turn that one off for me. I'm not necessarily worried about it, but I'm just going to, um, going to turn that off. So nonverbal feedback, not really familiar with this piece, but obviously it says participants in a meeting can provide nonverbal feedback and express opinions by clicking icons. Maybe turn that on, maybe turn that off. Um, allow removed participants to rejoin. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Here are some of the things that I do want to touch on, though. So breakout rooms. So there's a there's a feature where you can break meeting participants into smaller rooms. So if they want to do like you want to do group work during your time, I'm going to turn that on for mine. I'm not sure how it works, but I might experiment with it if I want to break them into groups of four to work on a particular problem or something like that. Um, and then I am also going to look at um, where's that other setting that I was looking at? Oh, there's one here called attention tracking. Now. Attention tracking is basically this. My active window on my iPad or my computer is gonna say, you know, I'm on Zoom. As soon as I switch away from that and go to Amazon, another, um, or another, you know, website or something like that, it's gonna say, hey, you know, it's gonna send a little alert. It's gonna say, hey, this participant is not actively focusing on the Zoom screen. An upside to that is, yes, if they're toggling back and forth, you can tell, hey, you need to be back on the Zoom call right now. The thing you're going to have to consider, though, is if you're asking them to switch between resources. For example, hey, check in your notes. What was, you know, what were we talking about five minutes ago? And they switch off. You're going to get an alert that they left the screen. So you just kind of have, kind of have to manage that. So that might be something where it's time sensitive, right? If you're saying, hey, everybody needs to be watching while I'm doing this experiment with baking soda, for example. And you see somebody switching off, you can say, hey, Johnny, you need to be back on the screen. You're supposed to be watching what we're doing here or if you're doing some sort of demonstration. So that's that's the attention tracking feature there. Again, like I said, uh, I'm going to be turning on waiting room for mine. Uh, I'm also going to turn this on. And this is, so at our meeting today, I had this problem, right? So my desktop uh, app was not working for some reason. I uninstalled it. I reinstalled it. I turned off my computer. I restart. I did the whole thing. It wasn't working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on, and it's going to allow them to join from a browser, which means they don't need to have the Zoom app. Uh, they can just join from the online, like Google Chrome or Safari or um, you know, edge or whatever it is. And so I would encourage you to turn that on because it's going to make your accessibility maximized for students that are going to be joining these meetings. Um, can't really think of any other settings here that, that to kind of go through, but that's the basics of some of those settings you might want to turn on in your Zoom account as you think about hosting these meetings. Like Dr. Lowe said, you know, we're in uncharted waters, and so we're obviously going to be learning. And I would encourage you, uh, I was doing this during the meeting today, taking some notes on things that I noticed as a participant, things that I thought might be helpful and, and stuff. So bring those to the meeting and really help us all learn and grow together. But this was just hopefully a short tutorial video on how to go through and comb through some of those settings to um, potentially make those meetings as good as possible at the beginning. And then we're all going to learn and grow together. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.